thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lashley. Yes, sir. I think you're up. Yes, sir. Good morning. Okay. Everyone join me in prayer, please. Dear Lord, thank you for another day that you have created. And dear Lord, please give us the strength and wisdom to take care of the business for the citizens of Alamance County. And dear Lord, we all know that all things are possible through you. With your name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is uh, approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. I think we have, Mr. Turner, you indicated you had a... I have an issue with the consent agenda, but not with the agenda itself. All right. Thank you. All in favor, it's signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. And seeing aye. there are no public speakers. And therefore, I would assume there are no commissioner responses. Please say no. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we're down to the consent agenda. Mr. Yeah, Turner. Mr. Chairman, I, I move that we remove item 6A from the consent agenda, appointments, reappointments. Uh, we've got some names in the packet, but I haven't seen any uh, of the other submissions or the submissions of the applicants, and would just uh, submit that it's better that we review those before making those approvals. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Chair, that's just 6A1. 6A. One and two. Six, one, one, one and two. Okay. Now, do we have a motion to approve? We already have a motion to approve as amended. Would you modify your motion? Well, I'll just make a new motion that we, we move the uh, to approve the consent agenda items B through E. All right. I'll second that. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Again, unanimous. Mr. Baker. Yes, thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Here on behalf of the Recreation and Parks Department to apply for permission to apply for a grant. I want to recognize uh, David Woody from our Recreation and Parks Commission coming today to uh, support this. Uh, our archery program has gotten more popular than we know what to do with. Apparently, our spring classes filled up in about three hours this year. Um, online Wonderful. and uh, you know, left a lot of people unhappy with uh, our inability to provide more archery classes but that's okay that's a good problem to have so this grant is going to help us expand that a little bit uh, it's for the Easton Foundation it's a ten thousand dollar grant to buy some additional archery supplies right now we're set up at Cedar Rock Park and at Pleasant Grove Community Center this would allow us to buy the equipment to get Eli Whitney Community Center uh, upfitted to host archery classes. So there's no county match required for this grant. But if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. For, for these classes, what type of bows are you using? Are you using compound bows? Or? They are compound bows. Mm -hmm. yeah. 20, 40 pounds? 
you, you, you've reached the limit of my knowledge. Congratulations. <laughs> what kind no of targets are we using? <laughs> Circular. Live, of course. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know. Scenario. I took my first archery class at Parks and Recreation when I was like <coughs> eight, nine years old. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, I've got a grandson that really loves archery. Uh, it's great. It's a fun time. <clears throat> I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Where is a large complex within 150 miles of here for Eastman? I don't know. Kingsport, Tennessee. Okay. They put on a tremendously large marine rally every year. Oh, so I did not know that. That's interesting. <laughs> Good company. Can I ask him a question? Not sure. pertaining to shooting people with bow and arrows. Um, I want to know how your budget is having to be adjusted due to fuel prices. Because y'all mow all the time and we do. So do we need to look at that? We're trying not to think about it. That's our current strategy. Um, that's why you're picking up our trade. Yeah, that's what just do. We just shoot the bows. Um, <laughs> no, it's going to be tight this year. Um, we're it hasn't haven't started mowing yet, so we're kind of hoping that this is a temporary bump. It's probably not, um, but I think we're going to probably be struggling by the end of the year. But we're not there yet. Okay. Thank you. Please let us know. Any further discussion or questions? Do we have a motion to approve? I move that we approve. Second. <laughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Miss Evans. Good morning, commissioners. Hope you are all are doing well this morning. Um, before you this morning, I am asking approval for a LGC contract audit extension. Um, it's regulations. We will need to have this in place for the LGC to receive our audit at the end of the month. This will be through DC, um, March 31st. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Candace, you're next. Thank you. Good morning, Good Commissioners. Morning. Uh, I'm here on behalf of DSS this morning um, to request two budget amendments. Both of those are on your agenda. The first one is in regards to our SIP program, which is our crisis intervention program. Um, this assists individuals with heating and cooling crisis. Um, every year the state we receive an allocation at the beginning of the year. They do reach out to counties throughout the year to see if a reallocation of funds could be um, provided. So we did request additional funds this year because we did exhaust all of the allocation that we had received. We were granted $83,785,000 um, as a reallocation. So we're asking that our budgeted lines be adjusted to reflect that um, so that we're able to expend that to the community. Motion to approve. Second. No, we know there's no county match. There is no county match, no, sir. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. uh, unanimous, thank you. You have the next item. I do. Um, we have also received notification. This one is specific to our adult protective services. Um, these are considered essential service funds that allows us to provide essential services for adults. Um, who may need protective, who this protective services have been substantiated. The funds will assist adults in, to age in place, eliminating unnecessary institu institutionalization and promoting opportunities to return to community-based settings. Um, the allocation that we received is $78,895. There is no county match. Um, we are just requesting these accounts be established. Commissioners, I do have one question. Uh, just because it was brought to my attention this weekend, and this is the perfect lady to speak with. I uh, wanted to tell you, if you could just tell me a little bit about adult protective services, like who do you, who are you protecting, mm -hmm. and how could I get someone in the community to reach out to you, because they do have an issue. Okay. Um, so they are looking at disabled um, or elderly individuals. They are protecting them from abuse, neglect, um, or um, exploitation. So we have a hotline that you can contact our agency, um, make an anonymous report. I don't have it with me today, okay. but I can get it for you. Yeah, it'd be great. If you can email it to me, it'd be great. I will. I certainly will. Thank you. Um, but we do have that hotline that's available 24-7 um, to make a report. And if it is screened in, there is a screening process. If it's screened in, they will send out a social worker. For okay, them. so if someone calls to, uh, you will send someone out to check them out? If they are able to screen that report in Understood. based on the criteria. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Thank you yes, very sir. much. I In addition, that. if I could add, particularly for the public's benefit, if there is a situation where they believe there is an immediate need of, and there is some harm happening to an older or disabled American, as Candace said, they can call communications. Communications always has access to the on-call worker for both children and for adults, and they will put that person in contact so that social services can, what, they do what, what I call a triage. They have a responsibility at social services to ask, and it feels like an inordinate amount of questions, but it is critical for social <laughs> services to be able to figure out how best to prioritize the call and how to assign help. Some calls are immediate, some are within 24 hours, some are within 72 hours. It just depends upon how those questions lay out. But that is another option for citizens to use um, immediately, and they could do that right now if they were concerned about an older person. Excellent. Thank Those you. phone numbers are on our website, too, I believe. Yes. They should be. What is the general number for social services? It is 570-6532. All right. And that is our that switchboard. One more time, please. 336. 5706532. Thank you. And then I also have the APS hotline as well if you're ready for that. Sure. It's 3362292908. Repeat one more time again. 3362292908. Thanks. We Thank have you. people in Zoom land who are listening. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and then uh, Mr. Haygood asked if I would provide an update on the DSS director today. Um, so we have contracted with an interim director by the name of Sharon Scott. She is with us for now until we are able to identify someone to take the place of Director Day. Um, they are, I did reach out to Heidi this morning just to make sure she, you know, if there was anything that she would like for me to share and she just asked that I mention that we are actively interviewing for candidates at this particular time and once we have identified someone we would be sure to share. But I don't think we have approved the $78,000 grant. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, whenever you're calling to report something like that before you pick up the phone, I encourage you all to do interviews with victims for many years. Write everything down. Write it down in some kind of pattern because when you get on that phone, it is very overwhelming. It's very nerve-wracking and, um, and you're emotionally involved. So I encourage you to write down everything so you'll have that to look at so you don't miss anything. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Miss Evans. Commissioners, before you this morning, I have a budget amendment that is asking for us to amend our budget by $66,001 for our home care community block grant. This grant is administered by the PTRC Regional Council, um, and the, we have received additional state funds. Also, we had two providers within Alamance County um, who were able to release funds that were not needed this year for their program, which included $31,100 from ACTA, as well as $45,000 from Friendship Adult Day. This is due mainly to impacts of COVID. Um, and so what the council was able to do was to reallocate those funds. So at the bottom of that output sheet, you saw that we had able, were able to, in asking for elder care to receive an additional 23,000, Alamance Community Services Organization to receive an additional 11,000, Meals on Wheels, eight, I'm sorry, $61,028, and home care providers, they have three <laughs> levels of funding. So that would be for level one funding, $2,103, level two, $5,738, and for their level three, $39,232. Um, we also have um, three agencies that were requesting rate increases, and that does require a county of Commissioner approval, um, one per, less than 1% for ACCSA, 8% for Meals on Wheels to cover ca additional catering costs. They've had food increases that they're needing to cover. And then home care providers, 17, 21, and 33% to cover the salary costs that they need for health care providers at this time. And you also need to think about everybody with Meals on Wheels is a volunteer, which is in their mm -hmm. car, which is their gas money. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know if that's going to affect because, I mean, every day, overnight, gas prices keep going up. So sooner or later, it does affect us. These are unbelievable loyal people that do this. I mean, it's their passion. So we need to keep that in mind as well. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'll add is that these do not require any county match. 
These are all state federal and state dollars. Motion to approve. I got one last question. Can you repeat the last two figures that you were talking about? Sure, for home care yes, providers. Okay, yes, level two is five thousand seven hundred thirty-eight dollars, and level three is thirty-nine thousand two thirty-two. Excellent. I'm good. I'm good. I just didn't catch those last numbers. I want to make sure I have them. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I second that motion. Okay. All in favor, <coughs> signify by saying aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. We see there are no public speakers and therefore no county commissioner responses to those non speakers. Okay. Um, I'm going to shift county manager's report before the county attorney's report. So, Mr. Haygood, if you would like to speak at this point. Certainly. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. The only item I have to report on is to uh, make sure the board knows that we, uh, the county closed on property located at 1129 South Main Street in Graham on February the 25th. This was property that we were examining for the use by the Board of Elections. We have closed on that property. We were able to acquire it below the asking price. The county paid the appraised value of $925,000 for this piece of property. And our next uh, steps will be to begin the planning to configure the insides of it for the use uh, for offices, training, and equipment storage for the Board of Elections. So uh, very glad to have that under our belts. And uh, Sherry and her folks are busy working on getting the plans laid and working closely with the Board of Elections to make sure they can get all their equipment and all their folks in there. So thank you very much. And that's the only item I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. I know that our health director's here. Do uh, you have anything you want to say? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Except things are looking good, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no news is good news. I haven't seen your Thank face you. a long time. Good to see your whole face. That's right. That's right. All right. Okay. County attorney. So I'm very happy to share with you and the community. Uh, Trip Eisenhower will be Alamance County's next county attorney. Uh, Trip grew up in the Piedmont area of North Carolina. He looks forward to once again calling North Carolina home. Trip attended Guilford College where he majored in political science. He later attended Liberty University School <coughs> of Law where he graduated magna cum laude and served as the editor-in-chief of the Law Review. After law school, he began working for Caskey and Frost, which is a law firm in Lynchburg, Virginia, where he became a partner in 2014. Tripp has had a wide variety of legal practice and has worked as the county attorney for Campbell County, Virginia, uh, counsel for the town of Brookneal, and counsel for Virginia University of Lynchburg, in addition to working for and with individuals and businesses throughout Central Virginia. Tripp is very excited to serve as the next Alamance County attorney becoming involved in the community and is looking forward to the opportunity to serve the board, employees, and citizens of Alamance County. Um, I anticipate that he will likely start midsummer. Anything else? I do have another matter. All right, before, uh, before that, I'm sorry. No. I, as a board, we <clears throat> want to say we welcome yeah, Mr. Eisenhower and look forward to his appearance. Absolutely. Thank you. I think he's going to be a great addition. Yeah. No question. And we appreciate the work of our interim county attorney and her staff Absolutely. for trying to bring us to this point. It's been a long process, but it's been it's run smoothly thanks to your help. Absolutely. You're welcome. But would indicate that they are continuing on at this point and will serve uh, fully until Mr. Eisenhower is here and and uh, takes the new post, but will continue to assist us even after that. And we Absolutely. thank you very, very much. Our privilege to do so, yes. Thank you. Um, the other matter, uh, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11A3 and 6, I ask the board move into closed session to consult with an attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body and to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, conditions of appointment or conditions of initial employment of an individual public officer or employee or prospective public officer or employee. I do not anticipate any public action following closed session. 
and that closed session we will do back in my office. I'll move that we conduct the closed session pursuant to uh, Ms. Bechtel's comments. Second. I have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. We are now in a closed session. Thank you. Madam Attorney, did you have anything else? I do not. All right. Do we have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're out of here. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.tv tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.